Welcome back to another episode of Stupid Geek Tricks with Eli, the computer guy, your chief clown. Uh, so we've been working with the Raspberry Pi for an AI project. Uh, so currently we're able to speak uh, to the Raspberry Pi. So we have this teeny tiny little microphone right here. So we've been able to speak. It's been able to turn that voice into text, turn, uh, send that text to Olama, to the Granite 3.32B model. We then get the response back and that's been shown on the screen. So today we are adding um, actual speech to text. So when the response comes back, uh, that will be turned into speech for us. And we are using this module right here, PYTTSX3, which is, it's great when it works. When it works, it's great. It's getting it to work can be a bit of a pain. But let's, let's show you how this operates here. So we simply, uh, da, 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 we uh, run the code. Hello. Hello. Greetings. How can I assist you today? When you eat groundhog, do you prefer it with barbecue sauce or ketchup? When you eat groundhog, do you prefer it with barbecue sauce or ketchup? Neither. Groundhog is not a common food source. Thus, the question is hypothetical and personal preference wouldn't apply. When was George Washington born? When was George Washington born? George Washington was born on February 22, 1732. Did George Washington ever ride a groundhog in a battle? Did George Washington ever ride a groundhog in a battle? No, George Washington never rode a groundhog in a battle. He was a military commander during the American Revolutionary War, not known for riding animals like groundhogs. So anyways, there you go. That's the basic idea of this project. So we're now able to speak to the Raspberry Pi and it is able to speak back to us. It is kind of interesting how this works. So when we do the speech, uh, that actually goes up to Google. They have a voice service. So this uses Google's API. So my voice goes up to Google, text comes back. We then take that text, we send it to the Olama framework. So Olama allows you to run LLMs uh, literally on the local machine. So that runs there. We get the text back from Olama and then that goes to this PT, PYTTSX3 module that then turns uh, the voice that, or the text that's coming back uh, into voice. If we take a look at it, this code is uh, pretty simple. Again, this is what's really cool. So this is some ugly ass code and it is 67 lines. Think about this. All of that power comes in 67 lines of code. We bring in uh, speech recognition up here. This is the speech recognition module. We have the Olama module here. Uh, that's for the uh, LLM component. Uh, and then we have PYTTSX3, that is the uh, speech or, or the text to speech component. Here is some configurations for the speech recognition. So basically, uh, different settings there. If we come down here, these are the settings for the text to speech. Basically, I have a little while true loop here, and uh, what's happening is when I speak, so we have this main loop. Again, this is kind of ugly. Uh, so this is taking the audio from the microphone, uh, and then what it's going to do is it is going to return uh, the value that comes back. So that's what's gonna come there. Uh, then what we do is we then send that response uh, to the AI, uh, function that we've created. So we have the AI function here. Again, just a few lines of code. So we're gonna put an injection, answer in fewer than 20 words, just to make sure this is short. Then this is basically all of our Olama thing is. Again, we're using that granite model. Uh, basically that then comes back as a response. And then down here we do speak, and we're gonna speak the response. And we come here, and literally, that's all that particular function is. So in uh, just a few lines of code, again, as I say, less than 67 very ugly lines of code, this gives you the ability to speak to your system, for that system to then turn that into text, send that to your AI, your AI then gives a response back, you then turn that response into speech, 
and it talks to you. So anyways, these are the types of things that we do at Silicon Dojo. Uh, this is literally uh, one of the projects that I'm working on. Uh, now, now the idea is how to turn this into something that runs on this little one. So this is where we talk about with architectures, right? Basically, okay, we get the functionality on that. How do we, how do we design our architecture so we get the same functionality off of a little $10 computer? That is what we'll be going for next. So anyways, that is what we are doing. Take a look at silicondojo.com if you're interested in that type of thing. And uh, see you all later.